Good morning, class. Today we're going to be painting landscapes. And I know what you might all be thinking right now. Landscape painting is for old ladies. And I agree. You're kind of right. So I've come up with some ideas to make this more interesting. We're going to be looking at landscapes within the context of juxtaposition. So I want you all now to go into pairs of two, think about what juxtaposition might mean, and share with your partner. So it sounds like you're all on the right track. So juxtaposition is when you put two dissimilar objects together in order to compare and contrast them to highlight their similarities and differences. So for example, the image of the airplanes, they of course are similar because they're both planes, but the difference is, is that one is a military plane and the other is a Disney plane. So completely different functions. <clears throat> For this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the juxtaposition between urban landscape painting, so city, and rural landscape painting, so probably what you're more familiar with, uh, landscapes out in nature. And the purpose of this is to notice interesting structures and forms between the two. So I hope you all brought your jackets like I asked because we're going to be doing plain air painting out in the river valley later today. So a show of hands, who here has heard of plain air before? Okay, it looks like a few of you are familiar with it. So plain air painting is when you actually leave the classroom or leave your studio and you go and paint in nature. And this is a really important practice to have because you're now painting from reality rather than painting from a photograph or just an image in your mind. And this is important because photographs actually flatten the lighting within an image. So when you're painting um, from real life, I want you to notice how lighting is interacting with the objects you're painting. So when we go in the river valley, we're gonna be doing small sample paintings like this. And um, they can be quick, super messy, gestural, but focus on the light. And what we're gonna do with those samples later is when we're back in the classroom, we're gonna look off of these to make our big work, and this will help us with um, creating works that are more 3D and more, have more of a sense of realism. And you can also, of course, use photographs or images from your mind, but when looking at light specifically, it's good to look back at these samples. So two artists that use a lot of juxtaposition within their work, the first here is Rene Magritte, and this is called Souvenir de Voyage, or Memory of a Dream in English. So this painting, it's very surreal. It has the leaning tower of Pisa leaning against a giant feather. So what I notice when I look at it is that the difference is, of course, the leaning tower of Pisa is a man-made structure and it's very heavy, whereas the feather is light and natural. But the similarities between the two is that I think they're they both have a sense of fragility to them. So it looks as if they're holding each other up. They're almost about to fall, uh, like topple over maybe. The next artist here is Mare Oppenheim, and this is her work object. So what you're seeing is a teacup set, but it's lined with animal fur. So this juxtaposition kind of creates a weird, eerie tone. And you know, just imagine if you had to drink out of this cup. That'd be pretty gross, right? So this is a student's work um, from last year, and he decided to do two large paintings for his final piece. And you don't have to do paintings though. I want you to choose a medium that works best for you. So something that will showcase and highlight your unique and personal style. So this could be installation, video work, uh, drawing, mixed media, or painting if that's what you decide. So let's, as a group, brainstorm um, what we notice when these two paintings are placed side by side. So yeah, that's a great observation. So the roots in this image really mimic the branches coming down in this image. Something that I notice is that they're both looking at very tall objects. So the trees in the rural one and the two pyramid structures in the urban one. And how the artist did this is by using perspective. 
So it looks as if he probably was sitting down low to the ground when he did these paintings and looking up, and this created a skewed perspective to create an even, uh, it made them even look larger than they actually are. So after we're back from the river valley, I want you all to fill out your KWL charts that I provided earlier and let me know what you do know about this, what you're wondering about, and what you've learned from this lesson. So let's go out and paint in nature.